Hey there, David Bowles, one of the co-founders of Dignidad Literaria, one of the people who was highly critical of American Dirt when it came out and used the controversy around its publishing to fight for greater equity for Latinx writers in publishing. And I thought it would be useful or interesting, or I don't know what the fuck, to um to take a look at the article <clears throat> that was published today, the op-ed by Pamela Paul, who used to be one of the editors for the New York Times book review. And frankly, that publication was one of the ones that really launched some of the major criticism after smaller indie voices um, had had their say. Um, and she starts off with this. Uh, three years ago this month, the novel American Dirt by Janine Cummins landed in bookstores and on a tsunami of enthusiasm. Extraordinary, Stephen King wrote in a pre-publication blurb. Riveting, timely, a dazzling accomplishment, raved Julia Alvarez. This book is not simply the great American novel. It's the great novel of Las Americas, Sandra Cisneros proclaimed. This is the international story of our times. Masterful. So yeah, some big names uh, said some good things. <laughs> um, yeah, they were asked by their agents and their editors to blurb a book, and they did so. Some of them likely without having read the entire thing. That was very typical. The book's momentum was nonstop. Writing on starred pre-publication reviews from the trades, the book, a fast-paced road novel about a Mexican bookseller and her son trying to cross the border to escape a murderous drug cartel, was named an indie next list pick by independent bookstores. Then came the rapturous reviews, a thrilling adrenaline rush, and insights into the Latin American migrant experience, raved the Washington Post. <gasps> Like the, ba the bastion of progressive ideals, right? Cummins proves that fiction can be a vehicle for expanding our empathy, said Time magazine. Finally, the golden ticket. Oprah selected American Dirt for her book club. I was opened. I was shook up. It woke me up, Winfrey said. She also said that it was the first time that she'd seen immigrants um, as people, which is a horrifying thing to admit. Um, and of course, Pamela doesn't bring up the fact that you know, Flatiron, the imprint of Macmillan that was publishing American Dirt, publishes Oprah Winfrey's books. And I'm sure there's no backroom deals going on there, right? There's there's no collusion, no um, desire to see one's own imprint um, be successful uh, so that one could continue publishing books there and be successful as well. Winfrey, of course, would go on to... Um, not include any of her actual detractors and her little um, secret show in the desert about the American dirt dust up. But um, that is a different story. It all fell apart with stunning speed. It fell apart. So the deal fell apart. No, the money was gone. No, the book didn't make it on the bestseller list. No. So what is it that fell apart? Talk about like this really, really, overblowing things and sensationalizing them. Wow. Thanks, New York Times. Following a blistering online campaign against the author, campaign against the author, uh, it, it makes it sound like there's some kind of coordinated um, movement by bad faith actors to destroy this book when it was a grassroots reaction by people in the Latinx community to something that they saw as egregious. That's not the same thing at all. And this is a complete mischaracterization. And others involved in the book over who gets to write what, and in response to threats of violence against both author and booksellers. See, and that's all, again, inflated, overblown. And when we had our meeting, when Dignidad Literaria had the meeting with Macmillan, members of Flatiron's editorial staff admitted to us that there hadn't been real threats against Janine Cummins, against her life or anything like that. And the one supposed threat against a bookseller was something that was blown out of proportion. This 
you know, in contrast, M- Miriam Gurba did receive death threats daily and has the receipts and pulled them out at that meeting. So again, this is this, you know, way of trying to manipulate people's emotions so that they feel like the criticism of Cummins was somehow um, you know, extreme and caused her undue anguish. Uh, Cummins published Flatiron Books, canceled her book tour. They That they did. Um, and they probably did it mostly because they wanted to avoid people showing up and protesting at the different sp- spots. And they used um, these frankly falsified because the edit like i say the editorial staff at flatiron admitted that there were no credible threats against um jenny and cummins so they falsified this to be able to have an excuse uh, cummins motives and reputation were smeared well they certainly were questioned and, and what they, they can't be questioned she's above being questioned so we're just we're just gonna we're gonna take everybody's assertions about why they're doing what they're doing at face value and never question them. If the publishing industry anoints them the chosen one of a particular um, season, well, that's ridiculous. No, that's not going to happen. The novel eviscerated by people who rightly found lots of things wrong with it, um, and that's their right. There's nothing that says we can't take a book apart, nitpick it to pieces and show what's wrong with it. That's the job of a critic when a book is truly bad like this one is. We are saddened that a work of fiction that was well-intentioned, who gives a shit about people's intentions? It can be well-intentioned and it can still be hurtful. It can be well-intentioned and still be crap, right? Has led to such vitriolic rancor. So by characterizing grassroots complaints by Latinos about the content of this book as vitriolic rancor, you know, the 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 upper echelons at Macmillan are trying to create the situation where they were the victims and there was like a horde of pitchfork wielding peasants <laughs> trying to attack the monster that was American dirt. Um, looking back now, it's clear that the American Dirt debacle of January 2020 was a har- I, I love that it's a harbinger. Harbinger of what? The moment when the publishing world lost its confidence and ceded moral authority to the worst impulses of its detractors. I'm sorry, but nothing has really changed. There's window dressing in place now. There have been some half-hearted efforts that were um, hampered by the pandemic to improve uh, the Latinx representation in both acquisitions and in the editorial staff at Macmillan, but there hasn't been any kind of real sea change. And so this is just complete nonsense. They have not ceded any authority to anybody. Um, They continue to do whatever the hell they want, Um, but they now are a little more cautious about it Maybe they hire a few more people to take a look at things so that you know, they get their ducks in a row and, and are less likely to step in it. Um, but that is, you know, it's not the kind of significant change that's required. You'll notice there's no comment at all by Pamela here about the fact that Latinx representation and in, in publishing is so minimal compared to overall white representation, that black representation, Asian American, all these are like minimal compared to the overwhelming majority of people both being published and working in editorial roles who are white. You know, if if less than 3% of books that come out every year are written by Latinos, when Latinos make up 20% of the US population, there's the disparity there that Pamela, sweet, sweet, good-hearted Pamela is not taking on. All she cares about is protecting the status quo and protect, protecting the vision of white liberals in publishing as the good guys who are doing their damnedest to save the world, to save this country. <clears throat> in the years since, publishers have become wary of what is now thought of as another American dirt situation. I, I'm sure that that's like literally in 
all of their internal memos, right? Let's avoid another American dirt situation. Maybe they even abbreviate it to AADS, which is to say a book that puts its author and publishing house in the line of fire. That's not what the problem is. It's a complete, such a, such a bumbling misunderstanding or deliberate misstatement of what the issue is. This fear, there's no fear. There's no fear. Now hangs over every step of a fraught process with questions over who can write what, who should blurb, and who can edit, permeating what feels like a minefield. Oh, I'm sorry. Does do white folks in publishing now have to like think a little bit before they publish a book about Mexico featuring a Mexican protagonist and Central American protagonists without ever having any people from those backgrounds read it, without doing any kind of fact checking? any kind of cultural sensitivity reads that is so onerous that it's like, it hangs like a pall of fear over them. Oh my God, Jesus Christ, woman. This is like, that is just, ugh. <sighs> books that would have once been greenlit are now passed over. Like, I'm going to give us some examples. Sensitivity readers are employed on a regular basis. Well, if you're writing a book about a friggin' black hole, you're gonna get a physicist to, to like check to make sure that what the author has written about black holes, black holes rather, isn't um, nonsensical and, and 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 counterfactual. Why would you not do the same thing when you have an author writing about Mexico and she's not Mexican? Why is that bizarre? Why is that onerous? Self censorship is rapid. <gasps> oh my God, people have to think before they write something. Am I the right person to write the story? Does it make sense for me, not having anything to do with this culture that exists in the present day and is facing serious problems, to write about it when there are other people from that culture who could write about it? And maybe I should support them. Maybe I could write a book about a white woman who is trying to help and, and, and is reaching out and trying to be involved rather than this other thing. And even if I decide to write whatever I want to write, maybe I shouldn't get paid millions of dollars for it. If it's not good, if it cuts other people out that perhaps have more merit, um, uh, a better handle on the story. Pamela goes on, dear Pamela, to say, a creative industry that used to thrive on risk-taking now shies away from it. Bullshit, bullshit. <laughs> Give us some freaking examples of this and it all stemmed from a single writer posting a discursive and fear discursive medium was discursive and furious takedown of american dirt and its author on a minor blog Ooh, oh i'm sorry that's right a little brown woman on a minor blog dares to speak up against the white monolith that is the big five Ooh, put her in her place pamela put that brown woman in her place Fuck. Whether out of conviction or cowardice, others quickly jumped on board and a social media rampage ensued, widening, widening into the broader media. In the face of the outcry, the literary word largely folded. Que montón de pendejadas. Folded how? In what way? <laughs> what measurable way do they fold? Because their publications in the, the three years that have gone by since then have continued to be largely by white people. There has not been any kind of significant concessions. It has all been window dressing. And I say that as somebody who's published by Penguin Random House and HarperCollins and other major publishers. You know, most of the big five continue to do just superficial level tweaks and band-aids um, rather than like getting at the fundamental issues of inequity because it would be painful to revamp publishing in a way that was truly equitable and that created a landscape of publications that reflected the actual demographics of this nation. Nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to do that. Uh, they want to continue with the sort of thing that they've been doing. And here we have some quotes. Uh, it was a witch hunt. Villagers lit their torches, recalled the novelist and bookseller Ann Patchett, whose Nashville home Cummins stayed in after her publisher told her the tour was over. 
The two were up all night crying. Who fucking who? I, if you think that I'm going to, that I feel any sadness or remorse, that's maybe that I contributed to a millionaire author crying one night. I don't. She's got her millions of dollars to comfort her. Um, and th that's just life. When you write books for the public, the public is going to both like and dislike your work. I've gotten plenty of brutal reviews of my own work. That's just like the, the name of the game. I don't stay up late at night crying because some buddy like eviscerated my book or took down my you know and uh, the my wikipedia article or whatever it happens to be it's, that's that's what you choose to be a public figure you get you know you have to deal with it that's life so suck it up janine come and suck it up and, and patch it suck it up pamela the fall that she took in my kitchen from being at the top of the world to just being smashed and in danger, but having millions of dollars, it was heartbreaking. I'm sure it was. How did the literary world let it happen? How did they let it happen? But they don't have any control over what critics outside of the literary world are doing. You can't like keep something from happening if it arises at the grassroots and it's a legitimate complaints about the, you know, the, blatant misrepresentation of historically excluded groups of people from the publishing world i mean come on like you're living in in the fucking ivory tower pamela you like clearly have no clue what you're talking about at all from the moment cummins agent sent american dirt out to potential publishers it looked like a winner the manuscript and of course this just ignores cummins is like long history already in, in publishing uh, as, a, as as editorial staff and also having published multiple books before that had done really well. Um, just glossing over some of those things. The manuscript led to a bidding war among nine publishing imprints, resulting in a game-changing seven-figure deal for its author. In the run-up to publication, as the editor of the New York Times Book Review, I asked attendees at Books Expo, then the most significant annual publishing conference, which upcoming book they were most excited about. The answer was as unanimous as I've ever heard, American Dirt. Publishers, editors, booksellers, librarians were all wildly enthusiastic. They were enthusiastic because they're part of a system that takes a book that publishers deem as profitable, and this machine makes it profitable. Everybody is complicit from the reviewers and the magazines that publish those reviews to the publishers who have connections at those magazines um, to the agents, you know, which editors are likely to like a certain kind of thing. This, this whole, and, and to the New York times book, uh, book review and it's New York times bestseller list. Um, the, which has, which they've admittedly said to the Supreme court is entertainment mm -hmm. and not actually based on any real, um, you know, measurement that they would want to reveal to the world. Uh, these are the people that craft bestsellers. They're the ones who decide who's successful. And they'll throw a bone every once in a while to writers of color, to disabled writers, to queer writers. But for the most part, they're interested in keeping the status quo. And so I'm not surprised that all these people were excited about it because they're part of this, the, the same system. They're gatekeepers in that system. Publishers, editors, Booksellers, librarians, all those people are gatekeepers that decide what books get into the hands of readers. And they're the ones who create the national dialogue by choosing which books get into the hands even of children through school libraries. And they shape our conversation. They shape our perceptions of the world and whose voices matter. It is a gross, monolithic, autocratic, white hegemonic system. And anybody supporting it and arguing that grassroots um, discussion, you know, criticism of it should be shouldn't be allowed, they're complicit in the whole thing.
then Pamela continues here, but you know, despite the fact that this book was going to change hearts and minds, blah, blah, blah. In December 2019, a month before the novel's release, Miriam Gurba, a Latina writer whose memoir, Mean, had been published a couple of years earlier by a small press. Oh, yes, a small press. Let's, let's make, let's emphasize that, right? So that everybody knows that, oh, she doesn't really matter. She doesn't really matter. Not to, she doesn't matter to Pamela. We, we don't have to like really take her word seriously. Posted a piece that Ms. Magazine had commissioned as a review of American Dirt and then killed. Doesn't explain why they killed it, right? In her blog post and accompanying a review, Gurba characterized the novel as fake-ass social justice literature, toxic heteroromanticism, and sludge. It wasn't just that Gurba despised the book. She insisted the author had no right to write it. That is not at all what Medium said. Medium literally said that by Janine's own um, measure, she, she did not meet the requirements for being able to write it. So, I mean... It's not the same thing, just taking her words and twisting them. And I encourage people to go and actually read that article. A central charge was that Cummins, who identifies as white and Latina, hadn't identified as Latina up until the time that this book was coming out. So that's another thing that is being glossed over here. But is not an immigrant or of Mexican heritage, wasn't qualified to write an authentic novel about Latin American characters. It's not that she wasn't qualified. It's just that she didn't do her job, right? Um, she did it poorly. It was like a really crappy, um, like melodramatic, um, black and white, very pulpy um, version of Mexico and the kinds of very real issues that are facing people who try to cross into the United States. Another writer, another writer, this is me, Another writer soon asserted in an op-ed that the clumsy, ill-conceived rollout of Cummins' novel was proof that American publishing was broken. That, that's, I had an op-ed in the New York Times. Um, the hype from the publisher, which marketed the book as one of the most important books for our times, was viewed as particularly damning. That, that it was viewed. In other words, David Bowles viewed it as particularly damning. I mean, she's doing Her damn does not to mention my name. Echoing a number of writers and activists, the op-ed writer, that's me, said that it was incumbent upon Mexican-Americans and their collaborators. That's right. I did say collaborators. Thank you for quoting me exactly on that one thing that makes it look like I'm some kind of like, you know, rabble-rousing commie, right? <laughs> to resist the ever-grinding wheels of the hit-making machine. And that's what I was talking about a little while ago. Charging it was unethical to allow Oprah's book club to wield such power. More than 100 writers... So it wasn't just me and, and Medium and our little minor ass selves uh, in Pamela's view, but a hundred writers put their names to a letter scolding Oprah for her choice. Oh, never mind that for years, Oprah had championed a diverse range of authors and been a huge, well, yeah, yeah. Oprah has like promoted a bunch of people who have turned out to be quacks. And she is clearly a multimillionaire who believes in capitalism above all, above all else. So, you know, let's not, let's not kid ourselves about the virtuous nature of Oprah Winfrey, okay? Or that a publisher will use whatever it can, whether wild hyperbole about a book's merits, whatever, to, to make a novel work given the unpredictable vicissitudes of public taste. Yeah, they will, as basically Pamela's admitting, yes, they will try to fool you into believing that this book is something that it's not because they want to make sales. I think that I should be able to criticize that. And I don't think that you're going, well, but that's just normal. I mean, that's just the way capitalism works. Other writer, op-ed writer, um, is going to work as an argument against what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Uh, but an influential swath of literary world clearly felt galvanized by the charges. And one of those online firestorms the world has come to recognize and occasionally regret, activist writers, self-appointed allies, and Twitter gunslingers. Twitter gunslingers. Yes, because a, a tweet on Twitter can actually like de destroy things. Oh, you know, giving voice, uh, letting just these these woke people from communities of color who otherwise have no tools for fighting against oppression have a voice that can be heard by millions of people. Oh, that turns them into gunslingers. Competed to show who was more affronted by the crime or the novel's success. The crime isn't the success of the novel. The crime, if there is any, is the lack of due diligence on the author's part and on the part of the publisher 
to make sure that there was no harm done in a book that represents Mexicans and Mexico. It was essentially held responsible for every instance in which another Latino writer's book got passed over, poorly reviewed, or re remaindered. That, again, hyperbole to the extreme. People were pointing out, hey, you know what? American Dirt is, is getting all this, but so-and-so's book got nothing. Look at this huge advance and look at how little this person got. Those disparities are important to point out. They're not something for you to joke about and for you to take lightly in your little fucking op-ed piece, Pamela. They are a serious matter. People of color have been excluded for 100 years from U.S. publishing. And for you to like laugh it off or to make us look like we're the villains because we, because there's a successful book by a, a, a writer who isn't like us and we're mad. It's just it's a gross distortion of the facts. As the story gained traction, the target kept moving. Yeah. The target didn't keep moving. We pivoted away. We didn't want to spend time talking about Janine Cummins. We wanted to affect change in the market. We wanted for Macmillan and their uh, imprint to do something differently. Okay. And so, but so every time there's like a new kind of criticism, Pamela is like saying that we were just like changing it up. We we're just trying to find new excuses to be, you know, critical of the book. Um, I don't even want to read this. This is just like complete bullshit. You see it on screen, right? You can read it. Look at this. What should have been done instead? Should the publisher have pushed back on the blurbers, asking them to tone down their praise? Should Cummins have balked at the advance saying it was too much money and given some back? Uh, well, here's, here's my counter question. What should the critics have done? Should we have just swallowed our pain? Should we have just accepted that this is what the publishers wanted and that we have no say in it? Should we have just like bought a copy of the book and been like supportive of the decision of the publishers? Because, oh my God, they're like, they're, they are godlike and their wisdom and no, fuck you. What the hell? What kind of a stupid ass, you know, um, false dichotomy you're trying to create here. Oh, many of Cummins fans went silent, too scared to mount any kind of public. But people were not silent. They kept like, browbeating us over and over again all you have to do is like look at goodreads look at look at my one star review of goodreads and look at the hundreds upon hundreds of really crude comments directed at me for daring to have a one star review just look at it and just go on just read and then come back to this and you'll have your eyes opened in conversations at the time, a number of novelists from all backgrounds and ethnicities told me privately, ooh, how convenient, that they were afraid the rage would come for them, for earlier novels they'd written in which they'd imagined other people's lives, other people's voices. Well, did they do a good job? Did they do their homework? Because if they did, they don't have anything to worry about. If they're writing fucking stereotypes that are like crappy and hurtful, then that they should be worried that people are going to criticize them. You don't you don't escape criticism. You don't get you don't get to not be criticized unless you do something that is not worthy of any criticism. And even then, somebody's going to criticize you. That's the way the world works. Dude, in your own family, your own family members are going to criticize you for shit. You think you're going to publish a book and not have any criticism? What kind of bizarre, twisted world do you people live in? What in the fuck is wrong with you? Really, that's what I want to know. Pamela is like, so no one gets to criticize you, Pamela, or Janine Cummins, or any other white person who is has got good intentions and is trying to do good work. No, come on. <sighs> For future novels, I wanted to write that dare traverse the newly reinforced DMZ lines of race, ethnicity, gender, and genre. Even now, three years later, many of Cummins' early champions I contacted were wary of going on the record for fear of poking the bear. Many people in the publishing world would speak to me only off the record. Macmillan, the imprint's house, did not respond to a request for comment. Yeah, because they're they put up their little window dressing. They don't want to fucking like they don't have to try to explain anything else. They've tried to move on. You know, the president of that company on a phone call to me, um, you know, begged me essentially to like give them a win. They they don't want to have to deal with this. They don't want to have to actually change anything. They want people to believe that they've done something to make a change and then keep going on doing things they want to do. Yeah. 
And so the accusations went largely uncontested. They're not accusations. We're pointing out things that are there. The accusations. McMillan submitted to a round of self-flagellating town halls with staff. Most employees at McMillan say that those things, those self-flagellation meetings were actually like, hey, this book is paying your salary, so don't be critical publicly about it. Cummins lay low, having become something of a pariah among her professional peers. Well, her book kept selling really well. Readers loved her. Again, go to Goodreads. Take a look at all the four or five star reviews. Take a look at all the comments um, attacking people who dare give it a two or one star review as if we somehow have, have you know, violated like deep moral laws by causing a white woman to cry. Since publication, I have been told not a single author in America has asked her to blurb a book. <laughs> so you don't get paid for blurbing a book. Who gives a shit? I kind of sometimes wish people would stop asking me to blurb books. <laughs> it's work. You have to read it and think about it and come up with something really good. But some calls for change that came out of the firestorm were well founded. Oh, thank you, Pam. Oh my gosh. You concede like one little point to us. In particular, the call to di diversify a largely white and well healed industry. <laughs> finally mentioned this publishing an exciting but demanding and notoriously no low paying job not for executives it's not low paying isn't for everyone oh, such a hard grind it's like being a rock star but it should certainly be open to and populated by people of all backgrounds and tastes and then look at what she fucking says black editors interested in foreign policy and science fiction latino editors interested in emerging conservative voices or horror that's what she wants. She wants Latino voices interested in conservative ideas. What a weird way to put it. Blah, blah, blah. So in other words, like she's trying to say real diversity is also diversity of ideas, not just of ethnicity. Let's take things one step at a time. Let's diversify the actual gender, ethnic, and racial makeup of publishing. And then we can start worrying about whether there are enough conservatives in publishing. Forget Pamela. <sighs> Yet in their assertion that the publisher somehow made this book succeed in ways they wouldn't for a, another Latino author, the novel's critics misunderstood several fundamentals about, oh, please, please, Pamela, please enlighten me. Okay, first it is a business. Oh, no, no me digas. Si no me dices, no me doy cuenta. Pendeja. And one in which most novels fail. Why? Because there's no PR behind them. Because they don't spend any money on them. That's why they fail. Things fail because you don't sell it. If you have a warehouse full of computers and you do nothing to let the public know that those computers are for sale in your in your um, in your warehouse, they're not going to be sold. <laughs> if publishing were as monolithic and all knowing as many critics seem to presume. Again, that feels like a pedrada for me, but I don't know. Publishers would make every novel succeed. Nuh-uh. Nuh -uh, because it's easier to make just one succeed and to leave the others to just kind of like flounder as they can. It takes fewer people. It takes fewer neurons. You just put all your weight behind the one book, make it a massive bestseller, and then use profits to float the others. It's a bad business model, but it's the one they've decided on. It's not of a necessity, as Pamela is suggesting here, the only way it works, because no one has fucking tried it the other way. They've never tried it the other way. They've never tried to put an equal amount of money behind all the books that they sell. They, It's just easier to play the game. And Pamela's part of the game. She has been for fucking ever. She knows it. She knows that all this that she's blabbering about is nonsense. <sighs> If all it took was throwing its marketing muscle behind a book and soliciting every over-the-top blur possible, then publishing wouldn't be such a low-margin business. When a book proposal comes along that generates huge excitement and the prospect of success, naturally publishers, why does it generate that? Because they know. They know which things they can feed through the little system and have it be successful. The, the kinds of things that it's easier for them to put their money behind. Um the, the, it all it all has a very similar voice, you know. It's all geared to um, appeal to upper middle class white women from um, the East Coast, basically. 
Um, and it and it fits with what agents and editors are all kind of like looking for, what they know, what they've read their entire lives. It's it's, it, it, it's <laughs> she's putting uh, it's like a chicken or chicken or egg kind of thing, right? Um, a cart before the horse kind of thing. She is misunderstanding the causality of the situation. What she doesn't understand is that nobody has tried the other way, and so she just assumes or wants us to believe that she assumes, or wants us to believe that she knows, that this is the only way it works. For most authors, a six or seven a figure advances a shocking windfall. Well, when the YA um, writing community recently compared their advances, they found that for white authors, a five or six figure advance is a lot more common than it is for writers from communities of color. So I call bullshit. <sighs> Many critics of American Dirt also made cynical assumptions about the author and their view. Janine Cummins set out to profit off the tragedy. Uh, and very few of us, I think, thought that. Uh, most of us just believed that she just did a really bad job and she was just inept and that she... Um, to try, you know, at, at a late point in her in the the project, realized that that there might be some kind of public backlash against her identity and this picture book, um, and and it seems like she tweaked her identity somewhat and her appearance and things like that. When you look at pictures from before and after, um, but um, I, 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 to me, she just wrote a book about something she wanted to write a book about, and she did a bad job. Uh, Janine Cummins is not to blame for this. Macmillan is. And the publishing industry is to blame for it. Um, uh, think about what it could be. And then all this, like, her idea of how we could be saying yes to this book and yes to these other books and da-da-da-da-da, yes, yes, yes. But we're not spending the same amount of money, are we, on a memoir by Hunter, an immigrant, or a reported border narrative by a Texas journalist, uh, or a collection by a Mexican-American poet. Um, again, a lot of these seem like like indirectas pedradas hacia la gente que conozco, pero en fin, no sé, no me constan. Instead of shutting down this particular author in the name of nobody shut her down. She sold 650,000 copies of her goddamn book. How's that shutting somebody down? 650,000 copies. It was a bestseller for the better part of a year. No one shut her down. Shut the fuck up. Nobody shut her down, Pamela. The outcry among its detractors was so thunderous, it was hard to see at the time that the response to American Dirt wasn't entirely grim. <laughs> That's right, because it was like a little bubble, a little itty, itty little blip. Most people didn't care, which is why you writing this long-ass op-ed piece, Pamela, is ridiculous. It's like, it's overkill. We didn't win. We lost. The United Literaria lost. The Latinos in the U.S. lost. Independent uh, publishers, independent writers um, who are trying to affect change and, and have real equity, we lost. We fucking lost. You won. Why do you have to, like, you know, make such a big deal about it? Why do you feel like it, it, oh, you can stand over our, our corpse and, like, rip out our innards now three years later? Like, leave us the fuck alone. And just be happy that Janine Cummins made a shit ton of money and that they continue doing what they're doing. A little bit of, a little bit of discomfort. It's a small price to pay for you continuing to have complete sway over the publishing industry, right? You beat us. You want to know the truth? You beat us. Damn. <sighs> the novelist, filmmaker, and screenwriter Guillermo Arriaga from Amores Perros and 21 Grams fucking white Texican that I don't give a shit about. But anyway, says that in Mexico, the novel was read and appreciated. Well, that's great. But it was published in the U.S. And it's U.S. Latinos who felt negatively impacted by it, especially immigrants who are now U.S. citizens and residents of the U.S. And so what a Mexican screenwriter thinks about the book is irrelevant. And you can take this entire paragraph and ball it up and shove it up your ass. I don't care. Okay. A few Latino writers stood up publicly in Cummins' defense. I also don't care about this. I don't care that Sandra Cisneros has doubled down and tripled down and has now quadrupled down 
Uh, Santa, no sé qué decirte. Ya has perdido toda credibilidad, but that's your life. Do whatever you want. Um, you can like the book. You can think it's wonderful. I don't give a shit. Just don't be upset when people criticize you for thinking that. We have a right to criticize you. You're not a, you're not a saint. You're not Santa Sandra. You're just a writer. You're just another Mexican-American in our community. And a lot of us res have respected you for a long time and, and, and held you up. But that's all. That's it. There's nothing more to it than that. You don't get to be untouched. You don't get, you're not some holy figure that no one can ever say anything bad about. That's ridiculous. You, you as well need to suck it up. Suck it up. Aguantese. Quería ser escritora? Pues aguantese. Readers, the people for whom books are actually written. <laughs> I guess writers don't read, right? We're not. Critics don't read. Or otherwise largely ignored in the debate. Literally, the ground roots, the grassroots rather, um, ground level pushback against this came from readers in a dozen different communities across the United States. There was a, a, a really amazing roundtable forum at the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley where I teach where people were making their voices heard about how how damaged they felt that our community's literary dignity was by this sort of practice. That is readership. Oh, you mean white readers weren't, oh, white readers were ignored. Ah, Pamela, I'm sorry. You should have fucking used the word white in your paragraph here and then we would have been a little bit clearer. Yes, white readers were largely ignored. I ignored them. I don't give a shit what they think about American dirt. Ah, <sighs> here, but I mean, and then look what this is. But it turned out that many readers kept an open mind with little patience for the mind not yours, the mind not yours tussles. Oh God, that animated Twitter and its amplifiers. Here in America, the, the novel debuted at number one, New York Times bestseller list, which is for entertainment only. Remember, that's what they told the Supreme Court, where it stayed for 36 weeks. Oh, yes. So then what the fuck are you bitching about? Uh, but the proposal for American Dirt landed on desk today. When it get published, the consta? Are you sure? You you have a you have this you have a fact? You, you have some facts that you could lay out? Oh God, the rest of this is just bullshit. Anyway, um, so where things are like, get really gross is down by the bottom, and she's like, history has shown that no matter how much critics, politicians, and activists may try, you cannot prevent people from enjoying a novel. We didn't want people to not enjoy it. Read it if you want to read it. Nobody cares. Read it. We get, we're just criticizing it. We get to criticize it. We're not trying to tell you not to read it. Does criticism immediately equal like an assault on you? So like we, we should get to like the things we like and never have to hear anybody saying, oh, but I don't like that. Um, and that's not good. So like, you know, I don't know, like somebody, maybe somebody enjoys pornography, right? And then somebody else is like, you know what? I don't know that pornography is right. No, you don't get to criticize pornography. That is my right to like it, and I don't have to listen to anybody criticizing it. See how stupid that is? Of course, we can criticize this novel, Pamela. This is something the book world, faced with the ongoing threats of book banning, should know better than anyone else. Don't, oh, no. See, now you're going to start comparing apples and oranges, right? Um, and we have the lovely Ann Patchett, who stayed up really late at night, comforting Janine Cummins as she cried, saying... We can be appalled that people are saying, you can't teach those books. You can't have Jacqueline Woodson in a school library, but you can't stand up for Janine Cummins. <laughs> Again, false equivalency, both sidesism, the fascist right-wing white supremacists who are suppressing Jacqueline Woodson's books from being in school libraries are not the same as the Latinx activists who stood up against the publication of American Dirt and the entire exclusionary model of publishing that is behind that. And for you to say the two things are the same shows me that you are a bad person, Pamela. You are a bad person. And this is a bad piece of journalism, a bad op-ed, and New York Times should feel ashamed for publishing it, and you should feel ashamed for having written it. It's not really much else to say. I asked to be able to rebut this in the New York Times, and they told me that I could write a letter to the editor. But okay, whatever. I've moved on. I know the shit ain't going to change. I'm just going to 
you know, keep trying to, to fight those smaller battles and, and do the writing I can. And hopefully the rest of you guys will do the same. Much remains broken in its wake. Janine Cummins may have made money, but at a great emotional, social, and reputational cost. Pues, así son las cosas. Así son. Ni modo. ¿Qué quieres que hagamos? Se que se contente con sus millones de dólares. She wrote a book filled with empathy. I don't know. I don't know. That's the way it came across to me. The literary world showed her none. Ay, pobrecita. Pues tiene su abuela. Estará bien. <laughs>